Hi everyone. Um, so today I'm going to go over um, data exploration techniques in R uh, using example data sets from the Privacy Rights Clearinghouse on data breaches. So as a reminder, this is for CSE 5338-7338 at SMU. Um, so the goal for this screencast really is to get you familiar with um, some of the techniques for doing data exploration. And so we're going to start off that by uh, looking at um, this very nice data set related to cybersecurity, which is on data breaches. So I'm going to switch over to my desktop so that we can see here um, the browser. So I'm at privacyrights.org slash data breach. And you can see in here, this is a chronology of data breaches from 2005 to present. It has all kinds of uh, interesting facts. If you scroll down this list here, you can see that there's sort of this um, database that it's sharing with us. Uh, so the most recent one then there is from October 19th. The hospitals of the Chesapeake lost 500 records. This is a medical entity, and the type of breach has been called an insider. Um, it even has some, even has like some text in here explaining what happened. Employee emailed spread to sensitive patient information. Blah blah blah. So there's a whole bunch of these, and you can actually download um, a CSV of all, the, of all the breaches here, and that's what that's what I've done. Um, and I have taken that and cleaned it up somewhat, uh, cleaned up that raw data to remove some of the extraneous information that's not for our purposes. So like these, this big, this nice long paragraph explaining in detail what happened, uh, that's really helpful, but it also makes it hard to read the data on the screen. So um, if we then switch over to some of this code that I've got here, um, which can be downloaded from uh, the course website. Um, this is explore underscore prc1.r. Um, what this will do is it will read in the clean data set. If you want to see, if you want to see how I cleaned it, you can. There's a link to the, where you can download the code from this from this particular code. So if we start things off in R, we have our R script over here. Uh, we can just read it in like so. Um, and so what happens is we've read in the CSV file, we're storing it in a variable called BR. If I were to just type summary of BR in the console, what I end up with is um, a summary of each of the columns of this of this file. So we have we have something called time, num breach, num records, firm, org type, hack type, city, and blah blah blah. So um, yeah, we can see that, okay, there's different dates when these things occur, and then they have them, these two variables, number, number each and number records, um, which seem to be pretty similar. Um, and we have the name of the firm that was affected, and we have these variables which match what we saw on the website, which is the type of organization and type of how the hack occurred. So summary is a good way to um, see the values here. Another way to do it is to use head, and that will give you just... Okay, this will give us the first six records, and so we can see what, what we ultimately have here in this data set is um, like, like a table with these different uh, column values. And uh, this BR is variable is a, if we were to ask what type it is, uh, and the console tells us it's a data frame. Okay, so data frames are the, the um, most important uh, data structures that are built in, uh, data types, excuse me, that's built into R. Um, so what, essentially what a data frame does is it's, it creates like a variable for a table or like a spreadsheet where you have rows of data points where each column in that row, uh, each column in that table, excuse me, has um, the same type. Um, and each row represents a, a given uh, data point. Um, so um, we can do some initial stuff here. We see that this time variable, if we were to do a summary of BR time, I it looks like that. What's interesting is that it seems to be grouping these things together like a factor variable. So um, 
R has different fundamental um, types of, for variables, and uh, one type is a number. Uh, I mean, you have these numbers organized together; they're organized in a number vector. Um, so, if we were to, but you have other variables like here, like currently, like time, or like the firm, which are strings. And these strings, um, when you can read them into uh, into this into the, your data frame, they get categorized as factors. And these factors are essentially categorical variables, where um, variables that have that same value are grouped together. So this makes the most sense in the course of something like a state, right? So if I wanted to know, you know, all of the breaches that affect a given state, well, um, that we can select on that uh, state variable uh, because it is a categorical variable or an R is parlance a factor. Um, but we may not actually want a um, such a factor variable for something like a date because a date is actually a different data type in R that allows that we want to use. So we can actually convert that that column variable in the data frame over to a date object. And that's what this line of code right here does. BR of time as as dat date. Okay. So now if we say class of BR uh, time will tell us it's now a date, okay? So then if I were to do a summary of VR time now, so it, instead of telling us, you know, all the, the counts of the number of instances of dates, um, it tells us um, that it treats it kind of like a number, and that we have, okay, the, early, the minimum date is, so the first date we see a breach reporter is 2005, January 10th. The most recent one is September 19th. Um, and it gives you the median and mean. So, so, so a date object, or date type, excuse me, is treated more like a number, but it's not a number because it um, also has certain characteristics um, like years and months associated with them. Okay, so data frames are really powerful. Okay, and so what I'm going to do here is kind of tell you, remind you of some of the ways in which you can um, use and reference data frames, okay? So the, the most important aspect of a data frame is that you have um, each, each column, if it has a name associated with that column, can be referenced by following the dollar sign. So like I said, br.time gives me just that vector. So if I put that in there, it gives me, oh, this big long vector of almost 4,000 entries, so it's just like extracting one column from that data frame. Um, but then we can even we can use something called a logical vector where if we where if we're taking that on that um, vector we can say all right if we include the square brackets we can include some kind of logical statement that will just select where that statement is true. So if we were interested in all the breaches that um, occurred uh, after the first of 2013 we could say yes as that date 2013-01-01. Okay, and put that in there, and it gives us, well, that will give us all the dates. If let's, but let's say, and we can sort of see this all makes sense. Oh, excuse me, brought up my mail for some reason. Um, if we scroll back up here, we can see that, yeah, these are all of the different dates that were in 2013. But what if we wanted to know the firms that were associated with that? What company suffered a breach? Well then we can just say BR firm and that will give us a list of all the different firms that um, uh, suffered a breach in 2013. Okay, so that's a big long list here. It's actually 364. Um, so let's say if we wanted to get more specific than that and we wanted to look at, okay, all the breaches that occurred in Texas well, we can add that in here as well. So we say BR of time greater than, you know, greater than 2013, January 1st, and where ampersand is the uh, operator for and and R, we say BR state equals Texas. And that tells us, okay, these are the 16 firms which experienced a data breach in the state of Texas in 2013. Um, 
you know, we could say, all right, let's, you know, tell me the number of breaches that, that occurred since July of this year, the second half of this year. And we say, okay, look, here is the size. Uh, it's going to give us this nice vector. Um, now, you'll see there's a bunch of NA values here. And NA stands for missing value. So um, R encodes all missing values using this NA term. Uh, so if you were to then take, say, the average of this vector, it's going to say NA. That's because um, when you have these missing values, strictly speaking, you cannot actually deal with the missing value. You know, a missing value completely disrupts the mean. So if you still want to get a mean of just the values that are left, you can pass an extra argument saying na.rm equals true, and it uh, tells you that the mean is 27,949. Um, if you wanted to just get the number of breaches and remove the missing ones, you can add a logical vector. All right, so you have your same condition, but now you have an extra condition here. So, and it's not the case that is.na of uh, the number of breaches. Okay, so um, logical vectors can be very helpful in subsetting the the data that you're interested in. So as an exercise to kind of test your ability to work with logical vectors, what I'd like for you to do is give me the name of all hospitals in the state of Texas that have experienced breaches of more than a thousand records. Okay, uh, so uh, first, we, I'd like for you to just pause this video and uh, try to see if you can answer this question. And once you think you once you've written out the code out, and uh, you can unpause it, and I'll discuss the answer. Okay. Make sure everything's going okay here. It seems to be. All right, let's bring it back. So um, again, what I'm asking for is the name of hospitals in Texas that have experienced breaches of, of greater than 1,000 records. So here's what the query looks like. We say BR of firm, so we want the firm name, so uh, where the logical vector is the, that the, the state is in Texas, the organizational type is med because we're looking for hospitals, and the number of records breached is greater than 1,000. And then we've got an additional condition here for not, not in as an A, so you'll, so you'll only include the ones where we have known numbers of breaches. Uh, so that gives us the list of the 18 medical organizations which experienced a breach of more than a thousand records. And we can see some of these we can recognize, right? So Baylor Healthcare System, Parkland Memorial, those are both um, in Dallas, um, and some of them from other parts of the state. Okay, so uh, this gives us an initial. Um, exploration of the data that's available. So um, step two, I'm going to, we're going to move on to exploratory data analysis. So we're going to actually try to work with this data set. Um, but before we do that, I'm actually going to finish this video um, and uh, break up the next steps in data exploration uh, into shorter videos. So you'll get to see, so you can just review each one that you're most interested in. So the videos are going to consist of first um, exploring a single numerical variable, um, and then we'll also look at um, exploring a combination of a, sing of a numerical variable and a categorical variable, then exploring categorical variables. Um, so uh, on their own. So we're going to break this up into shorter videos. Um, and you can view the next videos um, from the website. Okay, thank you very much.